The Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. Yeah, I tried to bring out the heavy metal for you because I know you're a big heavy metal fan. Yeah, but then it becomes not Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> See the look on his face. Like, I, was digging it. I was digging the riff and then I went, wait. It's a remix. Uh, uh, yes. Welcome back to the Riz Show. That's Brian Posehn right over there. Hello, sir. Hey. Do you hate when people get your name wrong? You no. Know, Is it annoying? No. Because it's... It's not an easy name, so I I never even used to correct radio. Like, I'd come in and do stuff like this, and they'd go, Brian Potion, I wouldn't say a thing. Well, and, I'd, yeah. and then I'd come back, and they'd be like, hey, we called you Brian Potion last time, and we found out it's Brian Posehn. Why didn't you correct us? And I'm like, because I don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. So uh, the commercials for your gig at Helium Comedy Club this weekend, a couple shows tonight, a couple shows tomorrow, the guy who did the voiceover calls you Brian Posehn. It happens. Coming up at Helium Comedy Club, Brian Posen. Okay, that's completely wrong. It's totally wrong. <laughs> Coming up to Helium Comedy Club, Brian Regan. That's not right. <laughs> 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 no, thank you for coming in. And Donnie Fandango is is here. He Donnie over here does uh, middays. He's on after us. And this dude is your biggest fan, man. Oh, nice. Once he found out you were coming in. Whew. I've been I've been I've been way more excited probably than I should be. And I think that you are one of the funniest people around. And we could not be musically any different like oh, like nice. opposite ends of the spectrum but i love hearing you talk about oh, okay. the bands that you love and one of my favorite things recently that i went back and listened to was when you were on mark Marin last year and you were talking about how you're getting your son into all of these different metal bands and one of the first things i wanted to ask is is organic submarine still together uh yeah yeah he still has a band my son my seven-year-old has a mm-hmm. band called organic submarine <laughs> he's the only awesome. member seven <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> So he has He's, full control over the band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of infighting. Does he play an instrument, or is he, or is he? He plays piano. Oh, yeah, that's he's cool. learning and, and piano. That yeah, is a gateway into other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and he also has. Uh, I have a bunch of guitars, so he has a tiny Stratocaster that he plays too. And uh, he just saw uh, Back to the Future, so now all he does is plug the Stratocaster in, play it really loud, and then strum it once, uh-huh. and then go flying against the wall and that's like Marty McFly from the beginning. <laughs> hey, like, no, that, he reenacts awesome. that scene. Yeah. So, does your wife have any kind of influence as far as what music he listens to, or is your wife? Uh, uh, are you are you guys are you guys on the same page as far as music goes? Yeah, my wife is. She she's not a total metalhead, but she's super tolerant. She grew up with metalhead brothers and sisters, and and so like when we first met, I was like, she's six years younger than me, and she knew the Scorpions, and I was mm-hmm. like, all That's right, right, this okay. is going to work out. <laughs> Second date at least. So yeah, yeah so yo, know, I took her to Tool for our first date. So, nice. Uh, yeah, we get a, we that works. She tries to get him to like other stuff, and like he already rebelled against uh, me a couple weeks ago. And he's like, Daddy, I'm kind of over heavy metal, but then. Back to the Future brought this love of Eddie Van Halen, so uh, it's coming back. And now he's like, because he wants to be me, but then sometimes he'll be mad at me. So he's like, no, now I don't like heavy metal, and he knows that's the way to get to me. Well, I remember my fir- the first time I was I was with my I have a, I have a seven year old son as well, and the first time he goes, Dad, can you put on that ACDC song in the car? And I was like, I was I was so proud. I was like, oh my god, I'm, I programmed this kid correctly, and I can't be around him twenty four seven. Obviously, right. there's his mother's influence. And on his iPad, he put on a Justin Timberlake song, and I said, "No, <laughs> God, what have you done? You've undone everything I have programmed in yeah. this kid." There's but, certain things that aren't allowed in our house, like Katy Perry and people like so that. But that hasn't come up yet. Like uh, he's heard he's heard pop music, and he he's aware of it, but he knows that Daddy hates it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't keep the kid in a bubble. So there's yeah, the yeah. other influences in his life. Like, what well, I remember kids at he was like four, and he was getting into it. I was standing right there, and he was getting into his friend's car to go on a play date, and the mommy goes, uh, oh, Rhodes, you, my son's name is Rhodes. He's named after Randy Rhodes. Mm-hmm. It's so metal and stupid, but anyway. <laughs> that is so metal. He's getting in the car, and uh, she goes, do you like Katy Perry? And he's like, no, Daddy hates Katy Perry. <laughs> I was like, right on. <laughs> you had a little I, tear, didn't you? I, I, I want to know what you were like in high school. So you're, I mean, you're a comic book guy. You're a metalhead. 
Yeah. Dude, you must have just been slaying vagina in school. <laughs> <laughs> Not until I started comedy, actually. Like, I was one of those. I was a late bloomer. <laughs> yeah. In high school, girls wanted nothing to do with me. I turned it around, though. My senior year was actually fun because I started doing the radio for the school. Mm -hmm. Like, I we, we had music in the morning and at lunch, and uh, that really helped me. And, like, people heard my personality on the radio. And, right. And uh, then they kind of started, well, he's still the weird kid, but... Like he likes good music, you know. Yeah, because I, mean? yeah, yeah. I, I was always the weird kid because I would say really inappropriate things and and uh, you know, and I would I would say things, but people were like, "What are you even talking about?" Like mm -hmm. I got that a lot. Like, but you, I'm sure you had your crew. So like you're the crew couple, of you know, you yeah. guys all listen to the same music. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, what were you so, listening to in high school? The uh, senior year was when Metallica broke, so that we were obsessed with, like, but it was a small town. I mean, they weren't even, uh, they were still, that was Kill 'em All, mm -hmm. so they weren't even major label at that point. But we, my buddies, my three close friends, we were super into them. And then we were friends with the punk kids. Uh, the metal kids kind of hung out with the punk kids, it made sense. And right. So that was that, it. What, what was the band that really got you into heavy metal? Was it Metallica? No, no. Before that, it was uh, Maiden. Oh, really? I, I mean, I always liked hard music. I always liked UFO and Scorpions and stuff like that. But then when I heard the first Maiden record, I was pretty obsessed. Did you have a jean jacket with the, you know, with Eddie on the back <laughs> yeah, and yeah, all that yeah. stuff? <laughs> yeah, we actually went to a Metallica show and got called posers by Metallica because we had, like, brand new jackets. And our moms were just letting us grow our hair out. So uh, <laughs> I went up to James Hetfield and I go, hey, my friend's starting a band. What should we call us? And he looks at us and goes, almost. <laughs> <laughs> You were like crushed. Like you crushed. just bought the jacket at yeah. Spencer's on the way to the show. 16-year-old kids who crushed. just come, come from the country with our brand new crisp, you know, collars on our brand new denim jackets with our brand new patches. You know, and just like so I didn't proud. Accept patch. Cock and, of yeah. the walk, huh? There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Metallica show. Yeah. But we were, we were like driving home after that going, oh man, our favorite band hates us. Oh my God. And, and, and they were, listen, they were, those, were, those were young guys to themselves. Well, yeah, they yeah. Were, they were like angry 19 or 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever reminded him of that story? Have you ever I wanted to do it again? I met Hetfield uh, during the drinking days. And I've met him since, but uh, during the drinking days, I saw him and I go, hey, oh, well, I was with a buddy of mine who goes, you got to tell him the story. And the buddy you know, sets it up. And I tell the story, and he just looks at me and goes, yep, that sounds like me. And then he walked away. <laughs> and I was like, hey, wow. Too, yeah. too, man. I, had, I had a similar. He's similar been story. cool since then, but, but I had <laughs> two douchey moments. <laughs> my, my, younger, a thousand. <laughs> yeah. my younger brother was really into Primus, like really, oh, yeah, yeah. really, really into Primus. So I brought, I brought him to his first ever Primus show. It was his first concert ever. Went down to the Roseland Ballroom in New York City. Uh -huh. And he was maybe 14 or 15 years old. I bought him a T-shirt on the street. And behind the Roseland is where, you know, the artist entrance behind the Roseland. So there were a ton of people lined up waiting to get the band's autographs. My brother had his white Primus T-shirt, and the band is coming down. Les Claypool takes the T-shirt, looks at it, throws it back at him, and goes, I don't sign bootleg shirts, moves on. Oh. Crushed. Crushed my brother. Crushed him. And like I get, it and I get it too. Now, that's a yeah, legit I thing. It. I get it too. I get but but it. yeah, but to be it, mean to a fourteen year old threw kid, it in like his face. Yeah, no, yeah. All, I, all I saw was the shirt over his face. <laughs> <laughs> and that, it, it started to soak up from the tears. <laughs> oh. But did he go home and and destroy his Primus records, or did he no. stay a Primus fan? Yeah, that's no, what I did with I, Metallica. Like I wish that story ended with me going and I never listened to Metallica again. But instead, I went home and went meh. I love him still. <laughs> you know, I, I told him. I, I, I told him. Listen, now you have a story for the rest of your life. I'm right, sure. right. And for it'd be sure. tough for a fourteen-year-old to kind of, kind of get that. But right. Do you like the new Metallica? Have, you, have you liked what you've heard so far? Yeah, yeah. I like the first song that was released. More, hardwired. Uh, hardwired more than the Moth to the Flame. I like Moth to the Flame, but it, uh, I've let it kind of play more. But the first thing I liked instantly. The Hardwired, because it's just thrashy. Does your does your Metallica love like kind of ebb and flow a little bit? Like, does it does it stop for you know the load the, and reload records? Yeah, I don't hate those as much as everybody does. Well, you I, upset when they cut their hair? Yeah, I, <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> and the Saint Anger record's a pretty garbage record. I don't really listen to that because of the drum production. It sounds so terrible. It sounds like Lars is just banging on tin cans. And, That's you right, know, but. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I love most of their stuff. I mean, um, I'm going to listen to Ride the Lightning the most if I have to, if I'm like, I'm in a Metallica mood. That's the go-to is that, that record still. 
And you're still into all that stuff. You still listen to the classics, huh? Yeah. Anything yeah, new? Yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah, I stay up on it. For for a 50 year old man, I'm actually aware of uh, young kids playing heavy metal. I, I yeah, I, I I stay on top of it for a- sure. Anything you're listening to currently? Uh, that I love of newer bands? No. I mean, there's a bunch that I like, like Battlecross and Huntress, and you know, these are all bands that have had a couple records now, but they're fairly recently new. Um, and then uh, I like a lot of Swedish stuff, like uh, oh, like. Uh, Swedish death metal stuff? No, no. This There's a new trend there where they're kind of going uh, lo-fi, and they sound like early Sabbath. Uh, this band Graveyard and this band Witchcraft, and there's a couple other bands that are ben, doing you know that kind stuff? of early Sabbath stuff, ben, and I, I love that. I'm a huge metal fan, too. Yeah, and it's cool because they've got that old that old sounding production. It sounds like 1972, hmm. like they're playing out of these old amps. And, yeah, it's I really like Pearl cool. Jam. <laughs> <laughs> we've I talked, said, hey, listen, I still rock 10 Come we've, on, t- man. we've talked about some death metal bands on this show That I oh, guarantee nice. you That even you, the biggest metal head Would be, what the hell is this? Some metal, yeah, some death I didn't get into I like the original death metal I like the Florida stuff Like DSI, Nick Sorter And, and uh, Obituary and stuff like I that I mean, we, we, we've had We used to do spotlights on death metal music What was the one, like, uh I'm sure you could find some cattle decapitation. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, this yeah. is uh, this one's called uh, "Dead Infection" and their song called "Hospital." I mean, is this noise to you? Or is this no, just... I get it. <laughs> and then here come the vocals. Yeah. <laughs> You're not far off. <laughs> 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 Oh, this is oh, this is one of my favorites. This is um, oh, a band called Putrid Pile and uh-huh. their song called Postcoital Satisfaction. <laughs> this is the ballad. <laughs> I feel what he's saying. This I like the fast stuff. Right here. This is my favorite part right here. Right maybe, 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 maybe you like drenched in gasoline. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is the same song. <laughs> obviously, yeah, I know. vocalist, though. Obviously. Yeah, I isolated the vocals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I'm not into. No, uh, there's some of that. Like even my wife, uh, we we're we weren't arguing, but we it was a little tense in the car, and I was playing that band Behemoth. And she just like broke in and she goes, This is ridiculous. Like, why do you like this? <laughs> that, that was the, the only time in our whole That record. band just gave her a light that just went, Wait a minute, what is he listening <laughs> yeah, yeah, to? Yeah. That was the band. That was the one. That was in all the things that she's ever heard me listen to is the band Behemoth where she that was just went, This is too much. This is just <laughs> stupid. Uh, Brian Posehn is here. He is at the Helium Comedy Club. He's got a show tonight at seven thirty and ten o'clock. Also a show tomorrow at 7.30, another show at 10 o'clock. And you're one of those guys where, you looking at your list of credits, you've been in everything. Yeah. Everything. I like to stay busy. You really do. I mean, you've had consistent work for many, many, many years. Yeah, I don't say no a lot. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have. Listen, this man was on on Empty Nest, for God's sake. That was Empty my first. Nest. Yeah, wow. that was my you first thing David I got. You met Leisure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did a couple kids, scenes with kids him. Kids looked that up. <laughs> yeah. But you, I mean, I... Empty I, Nest was on after Golden Girls, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that, actually. But you give David Cross and Bob Odenkirk a ton of credit for... For you and for work with, with 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 Mr. Show, can you talk about those two guys a bit? Because well, they're, they're amazing. They're my two favorite bosses I've ever had, and they're getting back together. Even I better than the Chinese restaurant I worked at when I was sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> that they would cuss me out in Cantonese behind my back. <laughs> I know you're saying bad things. Stop. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Because you're pointing at me while you're yelling. That's what makes me know that you're talking about me. But no. Um, they were just the smartest, funniest guys I've met in this business, uh, and I feel like I got a lot of stuff because of them, because of them finding me, and they kind of spoiled me because I couldn't write for other people after them. Like, there's no way to go to Mad TV after that, you know, or, or even Saturday Night Live because you, Bob had already gone through Saturday Night Live and right. had told me all the things that were terrible about that writing room, and he tried to stay away from that kind of stuff, and he was just, it was, the writing room was just... 
there are no bad ideas, according to Bob Odenkirk. Like, and that was the thing that I I learned of like, you know, let th- let people finish their idea and then like look at it, you know, and don't just immediately go, nah, that's not funny. Kind of was go, what did you find funny about it? What you know, he'll talk to writers and kind of go, well, that doesn't work the way it is, but can you look at it another way? And uh, that worked with me, like. He got me to be a better writer, and I still look back on those days. Was he the it's main like, force behind Mr. Show? Oh, absolutely. Bob and David? So yeah, Bob because he was, was more he was more experienced. David, it was only his second gig. David had worked on um, the, uh, the Stiller Show, mm-hmm. but the Ben Stiller Show was his first gig, so that's where he met Bob. But Bob had already done Saturday Night Live. He'd already been in Second City, and he'd already done um, that uh, Chris Elliott show, Get a Life. Oh, great show. So yeah. he's this <laughs> you know, super respected writer already, and we all like just you know bowed to him and just, you know. But I learned a million things from him. God, it was such an avant-garde comedy show. It was amazing. And are, is it getting back together? Are, are the we guys going to do stuff? We did a season last year for Netflix. We weren't allowed to call it Mr. Show because uh, HBO owns that. But Really? Uh, yeah, we, and, and they didn't want to do it with us. So. Did they do much? I don't think they did much press for it. No, for, for our show? Yeah. Netflix? No, not really. But uh, people saw it. The fans, you know, and I was just happy to be back with those guys in a room and writing. You know, we did four episodes, and we're talking about doing about six more like next year. So, so even your first gig, all right, let's go back to the Empty Nest days, which was mm. how long? What was that, 1990? Yeah. Some it would odd? probably be 93 or 94. 93? Uh, yeah. So how does, how does somebody moved like— to L.A. in 94. How does yeah. somebody like you—so you moved to L.A. How does uh-huh. somebody like you get a, get a job on TV? Dude— when I tell starving actors like how easy it was for me, the people hate me. Is it me. disgusting? Yeah, because I just, I you know, I have a look. <laughs> Let's admit you do? it, <laughs> and I have a voice that is pretty, you know, recognizable. Recognizable. So I think this casting woman just immediately realized that, and uh, so I just moved to L.A. It was probably my second set in town at the Improv there, and. Uh, I already had a manager, so that's how I got to L.A. He had he had found me in San Francisco, which doesn't happen very often. Right. Like, I had all these things that happened to me that, like, Luck. isn't most people's story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was just there doing a regular set. This casting woman goes, can you come in tomorrow for an Empty Nest? And I'm like, yeah. And I was super nervous about, you know, auditioning for a sitcom. But I went in. and She laughed, and she goes, uh, can you work tomorrow? And I was like, okay. oh, my God. <laughs> You know, and then I told other people, and they're like, "Dude, that never happens!" Like your first audition, and yeah, like on a, on a major sitcom, mm-hmm. and then you got—I mean, you worked on Seinfeld, Friends. I mean, it's insane. Just yeah. shoot yeah. me news radio. But that's why I credit Bob and David because half of those things you're saying, uh, people just cast me because they knew I could do it. Right. Like uh, being on Bob and David got the respect of like most LA writers. Because they love that show, like they were writing on less funny sitcoms and, and going. They, they were, they wish I, they were, I wish were. I worked on Mister Show, so they were aware of all of us. So that's how we all got work. Like in the early '90s, was guys just going, "Oh, let's hire Posehn. He can do this dumb part." Because you know, was there anything you really wanted that you didn't get? Yeah, yeah, Monsters Inc. I came real close to John Goodman's part, uh, and I still get Pixar guys wow. that come up to me and go, "We, we were pushing for you, but Damn. the studio wanted a star." And because uh, like, I'm not a star, well, no, I'm star? still not John I, I could, Goodman I, level. But I could hear it, 100. Yeah. percent Yeah, I I went a couple of times, and I I didn't know how close I got like then, but like, well, the casting woman told me I was super close, but then it was like maybe a year or two later, and it was after I had already seen the movie, and I was at a comic con, and a guy from Pixar came up and goes, "I just wanted," and it was at a bar after he goes, "I just want to let you know." how close you got. And I was like, I, I don't know that I should know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah I would have never wanted to know. Yeah. Oh, I never would have wanted to know. That one still yeah. sucks. Because that, that one, yeah. that one, you know, like my kid loves Monsters, Inc. And I wish, because there's not a lot of animated stuff that I've been in that he loves. Like I was in Surf's Up and he's sort of aware of it. Mm-hmm. Scooby-Doo, he just heard a Scooby-Doo episode I did and he got totally into that. But I wish it was Monsters, Inc. Because then Good I Good man. Sully, you know, <laughs> to be Sully would have been awesome. That would have been yeah. great. But I love John Goodman, so that's the other thing. Like, I can't be mad at that dude because he's 
one of the best. God, the voiceover stuff's got to be so easy. That's got to be an easy paycheck. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just, just roll in. out of bed, go in. You don't have to know your lines. You just read. I'm a good reader. So. <laughs> <laughs> and if somebody says, do it again, and I said, okay, fine, I'll do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with Surf's, Surf's Up, like how long did that did that in all take you to do with, with that your... was a couple of weeks and they you can't tell but they had a lot of uh they let us improvise in that and uh shia labeouf was my older bro- or my younger brother yeah. in the movie so he and i uh he was a good kid he and i actually riffed a lot and uh got to mess around and, and they had me come in and do reshoots on that and stuff too but, you yeah. love love just going and rolling in wearing whatever you're wearing yeah absolutely it's a pretty easy Drink gig. some coffee. <laughs> Not even. Cut some lime. <laughs> Don't even wake up. Just in and out. Little wake and bake. Head of, <laughs> in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you can, you can stick around for a little while, right? Cool. You know, yeah, I want to sure. do some uh, celebrity stuff with you uh, we, we up okay. after the break. Yeah. You got a place to go? There's no place more important than here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we're cool. Uh, Brian Posehn is at Helium Comedy Club this weekend. It's he- Brian Posehn. <laughs> <laughs> Kid or writer, he's walking. Now, damn it, you got me confused now. It's Posehn. <laughs> uh, Brian Posehn, two shows Brian. tonight, two shows tomorrow over at Helium, so buy your tickets, heliumcomedy.com. All right, it's 921 on this Friday. Another look at your traffic and weather. One final look. Here's Patrico. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Coming at you. Your point traffic update. That being brought to you by Ryan Kelly, the home loan expert.com. Uh, southbound 55, uh, right at 270 exit there, right at the split. The exit ramp is closed because of an accident. Your point forecast from Fox 2's Dave Murray brought to you by Amco Ranger Pest Control. Today, cloudy this morning. It is nice out, though, around 70 for the high. Tonight, cloudy and chilly, just under 60 for the low. This weekend, it's a nice weekend, a tad warmer mid to lower 80s for the high right now it is 58 downtown at union station all right jeff what do you got for us probably outside of selling crack the second worst business venture Lindsay lowen could do also johnny manzel's life going gr- just fantastic everything's, everything's yeah. coming up johnny Perfect. huh yep yep all right we got that we got your crappy birthdays we got the porno birthday and brian posein here stay there all right welcome back to the race show brian posein is here hello sir thank you for sticking around uh, he is at Helium Comedy Club this weekend. Two shows tonight, two shows tomorrow. Heliumcomedy.com. Uh, let's do some uh, entertainment news. Time to find out what's going on in the world of uh, music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. It's brought to you by Southern Armory. Conceal classes are forming. Now you can register at southernarmory.com. Oh, get down. Mm-hmm. Were you guys talking about the Rams in between? Uh... Mm-hmm. I just didn't know that was a thing, it's but a, it's it a makes big sense. Yeah, 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 it makes well, sense. You're an LA guy. Are you a football fan at all? No, no. I grew up with the Niners because I'm a Bay Area guy, but okay. I don't really follow them. I f- still follow baseball, but yeah. Yeah, it's a sore subject. That ended. Here. For, it ended for me a couple of days ago. Go Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Beat the Dodgers. Uh, Corey Feldman. If you uh, did not know, he did go back to uh, the Today Show. This was yesterday. He performed yet another song from his new album. Uh, but before we get to the actual performance of the song, uh, the lady that's on the Today Show asked him about uh, the support that he got from friends after all the crap he got from his last performance. Well, I know we were talking off the air. I mean, you've been to. Uh, you don't know Corey Feldman, no. personally, but. But we had his band perform at a, a rap party for Mr. Show 20 years ago, and uh, it was bad then. So, <laughs> Well, he's still doing the music uh, thing. He got better. Yeah. After 20 still, years of practice. Uh, I've gotten better at guitar. Thing. I don't know about him. Well, here, here he is talking uh, before his performance. A friend of mine who actually helped, he's an investor of mine, his name is Brian McMullen, and he was on the phone with me. I was all depressed and I was crying, and he said, think of it this way. When Kiss first started, when Eminem first started, when Nirvana first started, they all got hate. People were turning them off at the radio stations. People were walking off the dance floor at the clubs because it didn't make sense to them at that time. But those all became amazing legends. Right. Okay, so just first think of it that all. way, and that really turned it around for me. So it's our fault. That's not true. <laughs> I've read about Nirvana and Kiss. I was around when both. They, they weren't hated. No. Like, and they were revered immediately. Yes. <laughs> My favorite thing is in, in five years, can you imagine? It's going to be this Nirvana, Eminem, Kiss. Feldman. Feldman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Eminem was immediately His like choices, yeah, I mean, yeah, the yeah. only the only thing that happened with those bands in in that sort of like reference is uh labels. Like they were turned down by a lot of labels oh, right. originally because Remember people the first didn't get time it. you heard my name is from Eminem, you're like, damn, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. labels may not have gotten it as far as a business goes. Right. When it was put out and the consumers saw it, they went, Oh, this is badass, this is different. 
Yeah, I mean, I worked at a record store when Nirvana came out. That broke pretty quickly. Right. Like, we weren't sitting on those records for very long. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, Feldman just saying, we're not yeah. understanding what right. is going on uh, here. We're not hip to it yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't even, my head is just... <laughs> now you get to hear to the performance. Oh, okay, right? great. And you're not going to mistake it for Kiss or Eminem or Nirvana, <laughs> no. that is for sure. So this is him performing a song called Take a Stand. This is live on the Today Show from yesterday. Right now. We need peace right now. Just get up on the ground right now. Take a stand. Yeah. 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 It's like Nirvana, man. It's like it's like hearing Nirvana the first time. This is on the bleach. <laughs> So that was better than the first one? He's breaking it down. Take a stand. Take a stand. Is this the first time they're playing this together? <laughs> Did they get right, yeah, that right, song? right now was the first time. All right, Riz, now play the actual audio. We know that was me and no, you yesterday. That's it. Oh. That I, is I do it. feel well, bad for him. Really? Yeah, yeah I guess. But. I think what you're missing is the cool Michael Jackson moves that he was doing during that oh, he, song. Yeah, like you don't get to see those awesome. Oh, we saw that. <laughs> he he had the videos one, up on the blog. He had too, the one so. hair, you know, like uh, Michael used to have, and he was, you know, uh, kind of strutting around so like Michael sad. used to. And yeah, I just think he's just so delusional. Yeah, like I feel, I feel bad. He's I do stuck, feel a little he's bad. He's stuck yeah. in in what the '80s? Is he stuck where on Mars? Yeah, it's a weird thing. A is it a mental? Is it a? It's a mental. See, I was thinking, is, is, is this a result of all the drugs or not? I think it could be, but I think he wasn't that smart in the first place. And I think, he, like we were saying, I think he doesn't have anybody going, dude, that sucks. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. he doesn't have a good friend that went, oh man, you're terrible. You should just try to get back into movies. Yeah, you should do something else. Yeah. Yeah. This is why this I, is I have a thing. no guy. Is why I don't play golf. The last time I played with him, he goes, stop playing golf. This is not for you. You suck at this. Yeah, but you guys all, you guys all know. We all know somebody that's like, whether it's a a music thing or a golf thing or trying to get in a radio or something you know that guy that's like destined to be what he wants to be he's just not supposed to be that but are you the guy that tells him that well and then you, right. well, you're supposed to tell your kids like hey shoot for your dreams huh yeah. right but there's that old tenacious d bit of like try to be try to be an entertainer try to do try to do whatever you want to do you know go for your dream but give it a year and if if you do it a year and you still suck, stop. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that thing, like, Pick another sense. dream. Stop at some well, point. It's one thing to you know, know. tell your kids, hey, you know what? You could be president one day. But there comes to a certain point you go, dude, you're never going to be president. Yeah, so yeah. this is not for <laughs> yeah. uh, somebody who Do is something else. Somebody who is killing it. Uh, he's going back to stand up. He has been eight years. Chris Rock is signed on to do a couple of stand up uh, specials for Netflix. Dude's getting paid forty million dollars for That's two. That's Brian Posehn money. Yeah, it is right there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, dude. I want some of that Posehn money. Well, you know what? Though, if anybody deserves that, it's that guy. Like he still is my favorite. Is he, is he your favorite comic? Favorite living comic, for sure. Even more than Chappelle or... Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because I saw... I've seen Rock a lot, and I saw... And I love Chappelle, and I love David Tell, and I love Louis C.K., and I love Patton Oswalt. Those are my other favorites, mm -hmm. but uh, Chris is still the one. Like, uh, I saw him do Bumper... Sh or, uh, no, Bonnaroo, which is like 50,000 people, mm -hmm. and he crushed in front of 50,000 people. It was like impressive, <laughs> and then Metallica followed him. Like, wow. Nobody can do that. Yeah. Like, well, I know about, Kevin Hart's doing yeah, I was big, say, Kevin big, big, Hart big. just did where the where the Eagles play. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with his material, but uh, Rock I love. And I, like Rock is somebody who I want to hear his take. I'd love to hear what he thinks of this year, this election, and you know. That's oh, a so that's a by Netflix uh, special coming out. That's yeah. a great observation as far as like massive comedians like you're right i don't know what kevin hart's take is on anything nor right. am i even thinking about that when it comes to comedy but what separates the kevin hart massiveness from the chris rock massiveness is that's a that's a great point you never think about that i do want to know what chris rock's thinks. take on certain things yeah. or certain comedians no, you could still put at that on, level you well that's like on. with any good comic like i wish carlin was around sometimes to hear you yeah. know what what would carlin say about this what would bill hicks say about that like you know what i mean that's I like was listening the, to carlin actually on the way to work yeah. today and he did, he did a whole thing on why there are no blue foods there's no blue foods. <laughs> <laughs> blueberries are purple <laughs> 
You never see a really good looking homeless couple. I think he also yeah. he said that too. No, but if you put on Chris Rock's bigger and blacker, that is still still oh, relevant yeah, to yeah, kills. Yeah. yeah. You could yeah. still put that on be like, I'm still that's still funny you, all these years later. And you brought yeah. up Pat Oswald. I saw something on Netflix where he and you and somebody else, they were following uh, cameras were following you guys around on a little tour. Oh yeah, that was a old movie we did for Netflix when Netflix first started, Comedians of Comedy. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That that looked like it was a gritty life back then. <laughs> it was the best way to put it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll be in a bus together, but yeah. that was actually fun. That was our kind of good time. Yeah, because comedians don't get to do the rock star thing normally. You know, we usually travel alone, so to be in a bus together was actually. I look at that as good memories. It was ridiculously entertaining. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay Lohan has had her problems with the drugs and with the booze and just with life and everything. You know her? Have you met her? No, huh? no. <laughs> you don't run the same circle. Not the same scene. <laughs> <laughs> So it makes total sense that she is now part owner of a nightclub. Her name is actually above the uh, the door. It's actually called Lowen's, and it's opening this weekend, and it's in Athens where she's been hanging out over there. Uh, one of the uh, Greek restaurateur is uh, one of the owners as well. She is going to be hands-on. She's going to be getting a big chunk of the like profits as well. Is this like somebody who's a drug addict being the owner of a yeah, dispensary? That's the first thing I thought. Was that she's had so many problems with, with problems with drugs and booze? Hey, and let's staying out and doing bad things. So, uh, let's open up a nightclub. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, uh, what's his uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, David Arquette. Remember, he had a whole bunch of booze troubles or whatever, and then he owned that Bootsy or still owns that Bootsy Collins place. And I think he got back into alcohol and all that kind of stuff because he was running a nightclub, like running a full blown nightclub. She needs a no person too. Oh no, God. I think Lindsay, she no. Too. Just uh, smack her on the nose with a newspaper. No. <laughs> There is going to be a, a VIP area, and there's also going to be a V V I P area where you can actually meet Lindsay Lohan. Oh, a v, can't wait to go. I wonder what that second V stands for. Vagina. There you go. <laughs> she's got. She's scheduled to make two to three appearances per month over there, so I guess she's staying over there. Uh, former Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel uh, basically partied his way out of the NFL. Disappointing uh, stint with the Cleveland Browns. A bunch of run-ins with the cops and the tabloid photographers in a new Vanity Fair. Expo, Manzel's college roommate and professional wingman, that's what he calls himself, <laughs> Stephen Brandt is just rolling over on his buddy Johnny Manzel. He says they regularly do Molly, cocaine, marijuana, and Xanax and just guzzle the hell out of booze. Hey, let's party. Quote, it's not like this is some kind of Amy Winehouse scene, who's a dead singer, okay. uh, but uh, Johnny doesn't have a drug problem. He has a having fun problem. Oh, oh God. Yeah. And that is a quote. <laughs> God, this and is- the quote gets better. You know what? He says, this is his buddy. This is his drinking buddy. You and I are drinking buddies. This Going is out his bro. and slaying <laughs> vagina together. He says, the 30 for 30 is going to be great. Oh, man. Which is the Sports Center documentaries on. It's my on- bro. It's my bro. That's the douche that comes into the room when you just want to have a night in, and he goes, oh, you just don't know how to have fun, bro. Yeah. Come on, you man. Do you got to work tomorrow? Johnny has a yes guy. He needs a no guy. <laughs> I don't have a violence problem. I just got a swing in my arms near your face problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tuesday night at like 11 o'clock, and you're trying to go to bed. Huh. It's Tuesday night. You're not partying tonight? Dude, this Molly's not going to do itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, i got to work at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I'm going to head out. Have a good Friday night. You only had 31 beers, you big puss. It's 11 p.m. You drink over there, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, did you ever watch any of the uh, singing programs like the American Idols and The Voice and things like that? I'm guessing no, but she <laughs> no. was a voice guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you were discovered on The Voice, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, so there's only one of those left. So, of course, somebody has to bring one back. NBC is doing something. Uh, it's called The Stream. Different from the other shows, there's not going to be any auditions in front of judges, none of the rotating chairs. Instead, musicians are going to submit their own audition videos, uh, dedicated digital platforms like a YouTube, something like that. Then we, as Americans who will watch this crap, will decide who they like. Most streamed performers will compete on a live weekly show, and then the streams of those performances will decide who stays and who goes. Can't wait to never watch this. Exactly. I'm already confused. I'm out. So, but the reason why they're doing this, they're saying, guess where Justin Bieber was uh, discovered? Ellen. From the internet. Did you so, say hell? I thought it was Ellen. Ellen. No. She I probably know. brought that it was in the, from, that was from the a Justin, video. No, that was the Justin Bieber 2.0. Like some kid named Grayson. Oh, something right, or right. No, right. Uh, Usher found Justin Bieber on YouTube. Yeah, I know, but I thought I thought they broke him on Ellen playing YouTube videos. But maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it was just the, the 2.0 one. I thought it was both. 
What's it called? What's it called again? Uh, the stream. That sounds like one of the uh, porno birthday titles of the uh, oh, uh, titles God. of the day. Yeah, the stream. Does it not? Yikes. And uh, finally, I'm just gonna guess that you're a fan of ET or a collectible videos or a collectible movie per, uh, sure. stuff. The remember we said that the poster from like ET movie memorabilia. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, remember when we said the uh, the original poster from ET went up for sale. That thing uh, sold for just under four hundred. Thousand dollars, boy, four hundred thousand. This is the one that was given as a gift to some guy, and it was hanging up in his office. Yeah, it was, and it was a producer, a movie producer, but it was a gift. Yeah, it's been hanging on his wall for like ten years, and he got it down and put it up for auction. Four hundred grand. I I mean, you've been on a lot of great shows. Have you grabbed any souvenirs off? I wish I had four hundred grand laying around my house that I could (laughs) sell. No, no, never. You know, you're like when you worked on Seinfeld, never grabbed anything off the set. Like I'm going to keep this. (laughs) No, (laughs) that sounds super shady. I would do it. I'm a shady guy. Why is, did you is, notice he's shaking his why head is, when he's like, yes? Why is Sherry's no? door missing? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Kramer? Riz didn't even work on Sideville, but he's got food. Sally Jerry just sitting yeah. around his Didn't we have a shelf. bike hanging in this scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kramer comes in from his apartment. There's no door anymore. Like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Brian was here earlier. I don't know. Uh, on TV this weekend, you got Saturday Night Live hosted by Emily Blunt and Bruno Mars is performing. Sunday on Fox, Simpsons, uh, 600 episode. And Sunday on AMC, The Walking Dead and The Journey so far have you done the simpsons yes oh you have just did just this year yeah yeah hasn't aired yet but uh, that must have been awesome That's cool. yeah it, well that was kind of bucket list that was like one of those things where it was like oh i had been hoping to get on there and i finally got one did you get to work with any of the like, no the no that was with? the bad thing my buddy is a producer there so he just brought me in and we just banged it out he, you know it was me and him and a couple other sound oh, guys like, no and, julie kavner no or... no I've met some of those people over the years, and, and I, um, I that day the guy that plays Homer, Dan Custin Lynette, was there. So oh, he, that's he wasn't cool. in that's the awesome. studio, but he was uh, he writes on the show now. Mm-hmm. So I went and hung out in the writing room, and he was in there. That's and that awesome. was kind of weird, like I. Because I've watched that show since the beginning. Right, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to mention also real quickly. Did you see the new Rogue One trailer or not? I saw the Star Wars T-shirt. Yes, I'm super stoked. There is uh, about a two minute. I think it's a new a two minute new trailer. It's a second one. Oh, another one. That, yeah, just in the last week. Or? Yeah, yes, yesterday. last day or two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so no. Yes, but, but I'm already on board. Uh, everything yeah, I've yeah, seen, so I'm so into. Yeah. Well, so the first one, the main character, they kind of portray her as kind of bitchy and very rebellious. In this new trailer, they kind of recast her in a way uh-huh. more naive. Huh. It's just a different way of looking at the main character, and they're saying ah, it could be because they rewrote and uh-huh. reshot a lot of the stuff. Huh. But I'm in, man. I'm yeah, in. I'm in. Yeah. I'm there. I'll be there December 16th. Like when they show that, is it an ad ad in the trailer or an ATST? Well, an, I think it's an ATST, but when I saw it, it, that in there, just the the nerdy nostalgia, you know. In the new one, you <laughs> yeah. see, you actually see Darth Vader. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Walking down off a, off a ship. Yeah, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm so it. excited. I'm, dude, I'm so ripped out. For <laughs> <laughs> Who's in that suit now, though? Oh, like who's who's who's, who's the, the actor? Who's the new Vader? Is there a new Vader, or is it because is Prowse, Prowse still alive? He's alive. Yeah, but is he still putting that suit on? Probably not. Did he, was he in? Oh. He's, a, he's an older gentleman by now. Yeah. Way old. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think about that. I hadn't look even thought about up. that. We'll look that up. On the internet. <laughs> uh, here's your crappy birthdays. All celebs celebrating birthdays this weekend. If you have to uh, text any of your friends over there, Brian, just uh, here's a reminder. Yeah. Uh, Natalie Maines from the Dixie Chicks is 42. Oh, <laughs> Stacy <laughs> Keebler, 37. Uh, Shaggy Two Dope from the Insane Clown Posse is 42. Uh, Tito Jackson is My 63. My favorite of the Jacksons. I've always said that. Uh, Fergie, the British Fergie, is 57. Uh, Penny Marshall, 73. John Mayer is 39. Flea is 54. Tim Robbins is 58. Uh, Tim McCarver, 75. And today's Burton birthday of the day. Again, another one of those people that shock you when you hear that she is still alive. Miss Murder, she wrote herself. Angela Lansbury. At 147. 91 years young. Wow. 91. Were you on Murder, She Wrote? I think you no. did. <laughs> I was a murderer. Well, we finally got one. He wasn't on. <laughs> uh, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's Where Fun and Fantasy Meet, is Haley Young. And today's birthday girl, she's been under more sheets than a member of the KKK in 243 fine films, including There's a Whore at My Door, Volume 4. Mm. Be My Bitch, Volume 1. You gotta say please. Creamy Toes, Volume 2. 
It is what you think, by the way. <laughs> creamy toes. It is it exactly up. what you're yeah, thinking right now. Yeah, that's it. Uh, also, in, also, <laughs> also in Dr. Doomy, uh, the movie simply titled Hookers, in a film called Liquid Diet, Volume uh, 1. That's uh, also okay. exactly what you exactly think it is. What you're thinking. And who can forget her unforgettable role in Get Out of My Dreams and Into My Tub? Uh. <laughs> Haley Young, 32 years old. That's your porno birthday, your crappy birthday, and that is your crap on celebrities. Uh, real quick, what is in theaters this weekend? Uh, we've got that Ben Affleck movie, The Accountant. Uh, that is... Uh, Mixed reviews. The critics, 49%. Audience, 79%. Creamy Toes isn't in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was straight to Laserdisc. <laughs> uh, but you have 49% critics. Ben Affleck's audience. really good at Creamy Toes. People are saying it's Creamy Toes is it's the best tour, Affleck thing. Tour de force. <laughs> that he's done ever. Anybody interested in that? He directed it, too. Nah. No, not really. And then the only other big release... I'll see release, when it comes out on HBO. I mean, there's that Max Steel movie that looks pretty awesome that's coming out, and then that Kevin Hart What Now, which is... Um, I mean, it, it, it reminds me of... Remember when Metallica put out that... Uh, was it Through Some the Kind Never? of Monster? No, oh, was it no. Through the Never? Through the through ne the never yeah. yeah, when it was like kind of cinematic, but also like a concert Yeah, movie. Yeah, it was that's, a concert movie with some elements of... That's what movie to it. That's what this is. You know, it's like Kevin Hart and Holly Berry or, and or Halle Berry, and they're doing this right, like, so what's James the Bond thing. Eighty-one percent from critics, seventy-seven percent from audience. Good for that guy, that guy's printing yeah. money. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart yeah. printing money. I want to thank Mr. Brian Posehn for coming in, hanging yeah. out. Yeah. See him at uh, Helium Comedy Club. Two shows tonight. Two shows tomorrow. HeliumComedy.com. Anything else to plug? No, that's it. Perfect. Right. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm at Star Clipper tomorrow here in town uh, doing a comic book signing. Uh, I think it's two in the afternoon signing Deadpool. Which oh, cool! Is, yeah, that's uh, right. One of my that's other so projects. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's the new writer for uh, for the Deadpool comics. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Brian Posehn, everybody. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>